Hey guys, this is Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. In this issue, we're going to talk about a question that just came in. Um, assuming you have a list box, which we're going to make a user form with the list box, but assuming you have a list box and you want to make multiple selections and you want to pass those values back to one cell. So if you look in the background, we want to pass it to one cell comma, uh, separated by commas. So in this case, we have a list on our sheet called list. And the list is going to contain apples, oranges, peaches, mangoes, watermelons. And we're just going to give that a name. I'm going to highlight the list. And we'll just name it a give it a named range. So we'll just call this uh, foods. And I'm going to hit enter. So now we have a named range called foods. You can check that in the names manager if you need to change it. Alt-I-N-D. And there's your list. If you click here, you get the dancing ants to see that your name range is those. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new user form, Alt F11, to get to the Visual Basic Editor. So let's go ahead and insert a user form in the top left he hand here. And here's our user form. We can resize it as we see fit. Let's go ahead and add a list box. That's this guy right here. And you can, again, uh, resize that. And you can name it right here. We will, just for good measure, call it LBX Foods. But you can call it whatever you want for your list box. So now we have a list box. Uh, in a minute, we might put a button so that button would send it back here when we're done making our selections. But to keep it simple, I'm going to have this list be based upon the row source. And the name of that row source, we're just going to call it foods because we have named a range called that. So rather than using the add item method, we're just going to click on our list box. And we're going to go down to the property row source. Now, if you don't have the properties window, you can hit F4 or you can go to edit. Um, maybe it's under view. Sorry. Properties window. You can hit F4 or you can just select that. But you need to have the properties available or you can right click and go to properties. Let's go to row source and we're going to call it whatever we named our named range to keep it simple. And when you see that I type foods and hit enter, our list populates. Next thing we need to do though, uh, by the way, you can go to font and double click on it. If you want to make the font size a little bigger, I don't care right now. This is fine for me. We're going to make a multi uh, selection, right? So if we, let me click the play button. If you click on here, you can't make multiple selections, even if I hold control. So we need to make it so that it is uh, multi select. So let's click on our list box and see what options we have available. So under multi-select property, we have multi-select single, and that's no good. We want to do multi-select multi, which is where you just click anywhere, and it keeps adding more to your selection. I like multi-select extended because then you can use the shift key or the control key, just like in normal Windows operations, and control whether you're selecting two or all, all of them in a list if you shift click. So I like uh, extended selection a little bit better. So let's show you what that looks like. So if I click here and click away, it does let me click away, but if I hold control, now I've got multi-select going on. Let me click away again. If I hold shift, of course, I click down here, it's gonna select everything in there. So I like the extended, enough said. Let's close out our sample user form here and let's go ahead and get started on what we wanted to do. We wanted to, if I select apples and mangoes, using control click, we want apples, comma, mangoes to appear in cell A2, this big green cell in the background. So let's go ahead and work on that. And let's go ahead and put a button. So in your toolbox, and if you don't have your toolbox, you go to View, Toolbox, and it will appear. Maybe if you have multiple monitors, sometimes it's way over here on your other monitor. In your toolbox, you want to get a Command button and just create a new button. We'll make that button say uh, Run or Click Me or whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. It's your button. Let's go ahead and double click on the run button to put in some code. And you see that it automatically says command button one click event. We could have given the command button one a cooler name like BTN run or something. But since we're not going to have a whole bunch of different buttons like a cancel button and this and that and the other, uh, for this demonstration, I'm not going to rename it. So for the code in this button, whenever this button is pressed, let's go ahead and loop through our list box. So there's a few ways we can do that, but the best way that we could do is a for next loop, in my opinion. Um, so there's a couple ways to go about that even. So we're gonna say for x 
equals uh, zero, if I can type would be awesome. It's going to be from for x equals zero to uh, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could do me dot lbx foods dot list count uh, minus one because the list count gives you the actual number of in the way we think of it, and then you have to subtract one because it's zero based instead of one uh, based. So it would start with zero and then one and then two. So we want the normal number minus one because it actually goes to less than well, one less than what we think of as the total number. The other way you could do it is using uh, L bound and U bound with the uh, lbxfoods.list, but we'll just use this method for this demonstration. And then we're going to say next x and hit up and hit tab so that we can be ready to go. So this is going to loop through each list item. And then all we have to do to see if it's if the current item is selected is we're going to say if me.lbxfoods.selected and then we need to use uh, the index number which is going to be x so it's going to start with 0 which is the first entry and then it's going to loop again and it's going to be the next entry which might be oranges or whatever it is so if me.lbxfoods.selected the current index number uh, if that is selected then and then we'll do something with that. So we'll put our end if. I'm going to hit up and hit tab. And let's just put a stop marker. And let's hit F8 a few times to debug through this scenario. So the first time I hit F8, it's not really going to F8 or debug through there. It's going to open up the user form. But uh, let's see if we can trigger this. I'm going to hit Control and click Apples and Peaches and hit Run. So since I hit F8 earlier, it knows that I still want to go line by line instead of run it super fast like hitting F5 or clicking the Play button. So let's hit F8 now. So x is going to be equal to 0 all the way to, it looks like the list count is 5, which in, which really is going to be a list count of 4, which is why the minus 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, there's actually, yeah, there's 5. We're going to go 0 through 4. So if I hit F8, now x is equal to 0 for the first time through this loop. And we're going to see if that's selected. So if me.lbxfoods.selected uh, uh, number 0, which I think is Apple, if that is true, and sure enough, if you hover over it, you see that one is true. That means that one is selected. So now we have to go ahead and analyze these. Now the very first item, you don't want to have uh, a comma right before it, right? You only want that word if it's the very first word. Uh, but thereafter, you want to have a comma and then the next word, like, so this might be apples. And then the next time we find another selection, if there's a subsequent, meaning a secondary or tertiary or whatever selection, those ones will have a comma and then the new word of oranges or whatever. So let's go ahead and make sure that we find the very first one, which is a special case because uh, that one will not have a comma right before it. But every other one will. So here's what we do. We're going to assign a variable for our current uh, comma separated list here. And we can call it anything. We'll just say my var. It's kind of a generic, bland, boring variable, but that's fine. So my var equals, um, let's just do empty. That's fine. I don't care. Um, and we're going we're gonna to analyze this really quick. We're going to say if. Remember my var, that's the one that we're going to be using. If that guy is empty, then, and you could actually use the word empty, which represents zero and uh, empty uh, as well. But we're going to say if my var equals double quote, double quote, then uh, my var equals me.lbxfoods dot list. And we're going to use me.lbxfoods. Uh, no, we're going to use x. Let's see what that does. How about x comma 0, column 0. And it's mad because I didn't put an end if. Aha, there it is. OK, so. Uh, we had to use the column, the row number of zero. We don't have multiple columns, right? So we only have one column, which is in the zero index 
It's actually the zero width column, if you will. So that's why this would work. It's going to be the current row of the very first row, zero, right? And column number zero, because that's the only column we have. It's the first column, which is column zero, apples, oranges. They're all in that very column. All right, I've beaten that point to death. So back to this. Let's scooch up a little bit. So we'll start this loop a little bit over. My var is equal to blank. It's a blank thing. Now the very first item is selected. So if my var is blank, then no comma right before this word. So my var is flat out just going to be the word apples or whatever the very first one that's been selected, right? Uh, and then in subsequent examples, we are going to, uh, once my var is no longer blank, all other cases, so else tab, then my var afterwards, after it's no longer blank, is going to be equal to itself, so the word apples, and then a comma, put that in quotes because that's a string of text, ampersand will join, so the ampersand is going to join the word apples or whatever it may be with a comma, and then it's going to join that to the new entry. So I'll put me.lbxfoods.list, and we're going to use the same, same variable. If I could get that zero without looking, there it is. So what this means is, next time, let's go to the next one. So let's see, this one is not selected, that's oranges. The next one, x is now equal to 2, 0, 1, 2. So peaches, right? So then that one is true. That one is selected, peaches. So uh, if my var equals blank, well, let's see. It's not blank, is it? It's equal to apples. So now it's going to go to the else, and the else is going to tell it, hey, remember my var? Well, we want it to equal itself because we know it has some value. We don't want to override the word apples. We want it to be apples and a comma and this new word, which is peaches. So now my var has become that, apples, comma, peaches. And then if we had another selection, it would go to this spot again, and it would say, hey, whatever you already are, apples and peaches, now we want you to be whatever you are, but also add a comma and the new word, whatever is selected. So then that would dynamically uh, just keep piling on new words, and it would only add the comma to the new word if we've already established that the very first word with no comma has already been established. So that's how that would work. And then all we have to do at the very tail end, after we get through our big loop, uh, we just need to plant that in cell A2 and sheet 1. So we're going to go ahead and plan ahead and say, let's go ahead and write the code for that. So uh, let's see, this workbook dot sheets. And we're going to say sheet 1 doesn't matter what if, the, if any of that's capitalized. We're going to say dot range, and in quotes, we're going to put a2, end quote, in parentheses. So that cell equals my var. That's the variable that we've been stacking up, apples, comma, peaches, comma, whatever. And so whatever's in that variable, let's just get rid of it onto this nice little cell here. So let's skip to this part right here. Uh, let's see here, run to cursor. So now we've gone through our loop. Apples, comma, peaches at all is all that's in my var. Let's hit F8. And if you look in the background here in the green sheet, it's going to go ahead and place that and override whatever's in cell A2 with our beautiful variable apples, comma, peaches. So um, the last thing I would advise is I would say me.hide. And in any further, uh, any previous example where I said the word me, so I said that here, I said that here. Me, in this case, because we are inside a user forms um, a bit of code inside the user form container, I would, uh, the word me represents this current user form that we're using. If you were inside uh, writing code inside a sheet or inside a this workbook container or a module, then me would represent that container itself. But we're referring to the user form. And the user form happens to have a list box named that, and that's why it auto-filled. All right, so if I backtrack a little bit with our new one line of code, me.hide, what that would do is once the button is done running its code, it simply hides the user form and then ends the uh, procedure. So uh, 
the reason we do that is just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Um, so once it's done running its code, it hides itself. So let's go ahead and run it. Uh, I'm going to hold control. I'm going to do peaches and watermelons. So apples, peaches, watermelons. Let's go ahead and run it. I'm going to hit run and boom, apples, peaches, watermelons, and it's in cell A2. So I appreciate you watching this. If you have any questions, comments, threats, whatever, throw it in the comment section on our video. We'd love to hear any other further questions. That'll just fuel the fire for more videos. Uh, we love to help people out. If you haven't checked us out on Udemy, we have, a, we have a course, the Ultimate Excel Programmer course, and it kind of takes you from A to Z, uh, showing you how to do Excel VBA programming and become a professional programmer if you want. Um, we have a few other courses on there. One is on uh, barcoding and uh, making your own inventory system. And then we have a new one coming out soon where you can control PDF documents using Excel and VBA uh, and make uh, auto automatically uh, make filling out forms way easier so be on the lookout for that and check us out uh, please click like and subscribe if you like and want to subscribe other than that uh, thanks again for watching and god bless